The Granite Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church story begins about 10 years ago as we saw that Central Church was just filling to the rims and we needed to find some more space. First thought was, well, we'll just go to one of the remote areas around Sacramento where we can plant a church. But as we thought about it, uh, most of the families with children were actually commuting into the church. We figured the best thing to do was to just start over, build a new church. So we launched a capital campaign. After much dialogue and many meetings with the church membership and with the conference officials, both entities voted to sell Sacramento Central Church and move to a new location in the Granite Bay area. Inevitably, we realized we needed expert help in the area of stewardship, and so we invited Elder Ray Hubbard to come and help us with the campaign. His experience and his leadership proved to be invaluable. The steering committee mobilized the church body through actually a series of different events. We had a 24-hour prayer vigil. The committee visited every single member's home to solicit their involvement. And we hosted two fundraiser banquets. We launched out in faith with Building for Eternity, the name we gave to our campaign. The theme was not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. We all dug deep and gave in the end $990,000. This was raised for phase one of building an evangelism and worship center on Sierra College Boulevard in Granite Bay. With the sale of Sacramento Central and a partnership with Amazing Facts, the total needed to complete phase one was $4,250,000. Incredibly, 10 months later, we celebrated a Sabbath evening Vespers on this beautiful new piece of property on the hills above Granite Bay and dreamed about the future. In September 2007, and after about six months of organizational meetings and vision casting meetings and prayer and planning meetings, uh, we moved to go forward and 15 of the cream of the crop of our leadership at Sacramento Central, they began to meet for a prayer meeting in the Granite Bay area at Bill Husk's home, one of our central leaders. And the majority, of course, stayed behind and continued to hold them up in prayer and carry on the Amazing Facts media programs. So when we sent our church planting pilgrims out from Central to the Granite Bay area, we believed we'd all be meeting together again soon in the new location. At the same time I just graduated from AFCO, Amazing Facts Center of Evangelism, they asked me to be the Bible worker at this new church plant. We couldn't imagine how this small little group would grow and the plans would change. We met at the Stone Ridge Elementary School in Roseville. We were meeting in the school gym and it was wonderful because it gave us an opportunity to grow. Uh, but also it was an incredible amount of work each week setting up and tearing down. We kept ourselves very busy, we did a number of evangelistic meetings and then we started to see just wonderful growth in the church. Even though we didn't have our own permanent home, we saw God's blessing in a, in a wonderful way. Those days in the school gym were exciting yet challenging. We were adding new people all the time, but had nowhere to host social events, important in any church. We had to get creative. We planned activities together outside of Sabbath school and church, and we began hosting potlucks at church members' homes. We had some wonderful time bonding together over very delicious and creative foods. In September 2008, just a year after worshiping in the elementary school, God led us to the shepherd of the Sierra Presbyterian Church. We finally had a new church building to worship in. Well, when I saw the church, I said, this is great. Look at all the room. We need to get busy. So we started with evangelism to fill those empty seats. We also had some community outreach health seminars that we did, like cooking schools and depression recovery programs. We also did our annual Christmas concert. We had a lot of people coming out for that. We had a very active literature distribution program and the Lord blessed that people kept coming. We also started the Pathfinder Adventure Clubs for our young people because we believe in providing spiritual and social opportunities for everyone, regardless of their age, to bond and grow as a church family. The annual church campout tradition began and the young adult potlucks began to include the young at heart. Another very important component of the church is missions and outreach. So the church has an annual mission trip and we take a number of our church members. We went to Arizona and helped out on the Indian reservation. We also did a mission trip to Honduras. We're also sponsoring a missionary team down in southern Mexico. 
We believe that in order for us to grow, the church needs to be concerned not only about what we need and what we can do, but also reaching out to others around the world with the gospel. So we were really excited when we saw how these 250 people that had been meeting as a branch Sabbath school were organized into an official company on March 19th, 2011. We didn't anticipate how many twists and turns this whole process might take, nor did I anticipate that I would end up being the senior pastor of two churches. But we could see the Lord was leading every step of the way. And we were especially excited when the conference leadership joined us in 2013, and we were officially organized as a Seventh-day Adventist church. The attendance continued to grow, and we were having between three and 400 people that were coming. We were running out of room, so with longing and excitement, we were looking forward to this Family Life Evangelism Training Center, affectionately known as the Church Up on the Hill. But we had never anticipated the a difficult process of getting through the permits and the EIR in California. But you know, whenever you want anything good, you gotta keep praying and keep working and keep dreaming. There's an ancient Chinese proverb that says something to the effect that you can't cross a river with a foot in two different boats. And as the Lord continued to bless both the Central Church and the Granite Bay Church and the responsibilities increased, not to mention everything that happens with amazing facts, Karen and I talked and prayed and we needed to make a very difficult decision and knew it was time to say farewell to our dear family and friends that uh, were part of the Sacramento Central Church where Karen was baptized and we were married and this is one of the hardest things we ever had to do. So in January 2014, with sadness in our hearts, we made the announcement of the move that we had been anticipating for so long. With Pastor Doug's full-time arrival, I began to realize we need some more space, especially if we're going to be using media to broadcast our services around the world. So that led us to begin looking for other places where we could meet to continue the mission of the Granite Bay Church. We knew we had to find a solution because the new building wasn't forthcoming right away. And that's when Amazing Facts learned about the uh, bank sale building that we're meeting in now, 21,000 square feet. And all of this that's been so exciting has been about a partnership where we combine the, the church family with the ability to broadcast to people who want to be part of a church and they're not able to attend one locally. And so we saw this as the leading of God to give us a place to continue recording services in Sabbath school. And it's this partnership we believe is uh, going to make a big difference in the last days for evangelism and for the future of the church. Joining this church family has been one of the best decisions we have ever made. We know this church has been an answer to prayer, not only for us, but for many families who have moved here or live here and call Granite Bay their church home. We feel so blessed to be a part of this active Bible-based church now spreading the gospel message the same way we used to watch Pastor Doug online. The Granite Bay Church's story is far from over and there's a lot still being written right now. But I just want to take a moment and thank everybody for their incredible sacrifice. I want to thank the Sacramento Central members who invested so heavily in the capital campaign and helping launch this new church. And I want to thank those in the church and others who came and did just a phenomenal amount of work, practical things around the building, uh, just uh, putting their blood, sweat and tears into renovating this shell of a building and turning it into a warm church place of worship. And last, but not least, I want to thank you, the Granite Bay Church members, for your partnership with Amazing Facts, because you are making a big difference for eternity. And throughout the ceaseless ages, you're going to see the fruits of what has happened because you've opened up your congregation to people not only across the street, but around the world. We have a very bright future.